Hey friends, Rick Lawson here, a little Bible study for you for Tuesday evening. Of course, I'm here at the church building, <clears throat> and uh, nobody else is here. Nobody else can get out, really. Uh, and these are very strange times that we're living in. You know, whenever difficult times like this come up, often you he start hearing the attacks of the atheists. Uh, I know that recently somebody got up, a CEO got up at one of the president's news conferences and told people to use this time to read the Bible and turn back to God. And boy, that set off a firestorm in the, in the media and on Twitter and so forth. Uh, even here locally, or more locally, our uh, understand that our governor quoted a passage from uh, the book of Joshua during one of his press conferences and people got uh, sort of got upset about that in some circles. Uh, sometimes you hear atheists start chiming in a time, at a time like this when obviously people are going through difficult times and uh, they're suffering in the world and they start saying things like, well, if God was really powerful, uh, if there was a God and he was a powerful God, then he wouldn't allow suffering. Or if there was a God and he was a loving God, then he wouldn't allow suffering. And so therefore they say God must not exist. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of reasons that suffering does exist in the world. And there are a lot of good reasons for suffering. Uh, I want to tell you just a few minutes, uh, for a few minutes this, uh, this evening, about some good reasons for suffering or some of the benefits that we receive uh, in times of suffering. And we could talk about the causes of suffering and so forth, but really at a time like this, that's sort of academic. It really doesn't matter where this virus came from or uh, th that sort of thing. It's here, and people we know are sick, and people in our own communities, in our own state, and our own country are dying. And so it's already here. Uh, what, can we, what can we learn about benefits from suffering during this time? Well, let, me, let me name off a few of them just briefly. Number one, during times of suffering like this, uh, it helps us learn to have complete dependence upon God. You know, at, at a time when we're not sure what the doctors know or what the scientists know, some of the best minds in our country are working on this problem. And they really don't know uh, all the ways to keep people safe, how, this, how these things can spread, and, and what we need to do. Do we need to wear a mask or not wear, wear a mask? Stay at home or can we go out some? People don't really know for sure. Uh, but I tell you what we do know for sure. God is the one that's in control and we need to depend upon Him. We can look to many examples in the Bible of people who put their trust and confidence in God even during times of uh, even during times of suffering. One is Job. You know, Job is often held up as an example of suffering. That's why, I believe that's why the book of Job is in the Bible, to show us, uh, number one, that God loves us and Satan hates us, but also to learn that we can be faithful in spite of our circumstances. The Bible says that after everything that happened to Job, in Job chapter 1 and verse number 10, that Job did not sin with his lips. Uh, Job 1 and verse number 2 says that Job did not charge God foolishly. And then in Job chapter 9 and verse number 25, I think we, see, uh, we learn why Job didn't curse God, why he remained faithful throughout all of his problems, and that is because he knew that his Redeemer lived, uh, Job chapter 9 and verse number 25. And so God, uh, Job knew that God was going to take care of him in the end. You know, Daniel falls into that same category too. Uh, Daniel learned to have complete dependence on God. He was kidnapped from his home while he was a young man and taken to a, a foreign land as sort of a, uh, as sort of a battle trophy. And yet, uh, Daniel was one who stayed faithful to God. He depended on the Lord and, and God blessed him through that suffering that he faced in life. Uh, Paul had times of tremendous suffering, of course, in his life. Uh, he talks about the thorn in the flesh that he had in First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And he said that he prayed three times that God would remove it. And of course, God never did remove it. He learned that uh, God's grace was sufficient through that time of trouble. And so that's the bottom line for us, isn't it? In times of suffering, in times of trial, in times of tribulation, we can depend on God. We must depend on God because God is the one who's in control. Without that suffering, uh, many people would think that they had it, uh, you know, that they were making it 
on their own in life, that they didn't have to depend upon God. And of course, in times of suffering, we learn that we do have to depend upon God. So number one, we learn dependence on God. Number two, in times of suffering, uh, we learn the support and love of our family during times of suffering. You know, there's no greater strength, a source of strength, I think, when people are going through difficult times uh, than, to, than for them to realize that their family is there with them. You know, in times, uh, especially during times of sickness, illness, and, and problems uh, that, that they face of a physical nature, uh, who else is there, especially at a time like this when we can't go out and, and visit our sick friends? Who are we depending on? Well, many people are depending upon their, their families. And so when we're sick, I know that's the case with me. When I'm sick, my wife spends long hours uh, spend, uh, caring for me, never wavering, always there, always providing what I need and, and doing her best to try to help get me better. You know, that we do that for our children, right? And hopefully they learn the power of family. And it's during times of suffering, it's during times where the chips are down that we really learn how much our families are there for us. And that's true these days too. You know, right now we're on sort of lockdown, uh, shelter at home, stay at home kind of a, an atmosphere. And we're there with our families all the time and we need to learn to love one another and appreciate one another. Uh, be long suffering. E even if everybody's well, sometimes you can get on one another's nerves but be kind to one another, love one another throughout this time, and uh, use this time to draw closer to your family. Uh, in, the, in a similar vein, number three, we can learn or we can uh, benefit from our suffering by learning how much our fellow Christians, especially those in our local congregation, uh, mean to us. You know, I think one of the, maybe one of the benefits of not being able to come together and worship like we, would, uh, like we normally would or like we desire is maybe it's making us miss that so that when this is all in the rearview mirror and when all the problem with this sickness is behind us, we're able to come back together and worship God. Won't that be a wonderful day? Won't that be a great Lord's Day? we able to get back in this building and fill it up with people and uh, have Terry or one of our other song leaders standing up there leading us in, uh, in uh, praise to God in our singing. What, what a blessing that will be. You know, we, have, we depend upon family. We depend upon our church family to help us through these difficult times. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this and, and you are local here to Adairsville, you're, especially if you're part of our church family, if you need help, all you have to do is let somebody know. Call one of our elders. Call one of our deacons. Call me. We will help you. We'll go to the grocery store. We'll go to the pharmacy. We'll get whatever you need. M maybe you uh, have something that you have to have done at home and you just can't do it. Let somebody know and we'll help you in every way that we can. A time, in a time of suffering like this, we ought to learn to depend more on our church family and appreciate the great love that we have one for another. Here's another benefit of suffering. When we suffer in this life, it helps us appreciate even more the kinds of suffering that Christ went through. You know, we are told to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We study our Bibles to learn more about the Lord and the things that He went through. And in no way does our suffering compare with the suffering of Christ. Uh, one of my instructors in preaching school used to tell me, when you're having a bad day and when you think everybody's piling up on you and, uh, and uh, you know, things, uh, things just aren't, aren't going good for you, look down at your wrists and see if there are any nail prints there. Uh, we haven't suffered unto blood. We haven't suffered unto death the way that Christ did. But we begin to appreciate the kinds of things that he suffered. He, the Bible says he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Philippians 2, verse number 6. And so the humiliation and pain of the cross, uh, the suffering and agony, when we suffer, we get a small glimpse into what Jesus uh, suffered for us. And uh, that, I hope, will better help us appreciate Christ and the sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us. Uh, in our sufferings, we get a taste of what Jesus suffered for you and me. And he could have stopped at any time. You know, most of the time when we're going through suffering, it's not of our own choosing and not something that we can do anything about. Christ could have stopped it all in an instant. 
but he continued on for you and me. But I'm thankful in times of, uh, in times of distress, in times of suffering, it helps us better appreciate what Christ did for us. And then one final thought about some benefits from our suffering is that we learn that what we face here in this life uh, does not even compare with the glory that we'll have on the other side of the river of life. You know, I tell people sometimes that if life were all good, all great, all the time here, then we wouldn't really look forward to heaven as much, would we? But when we're facing difficulty, when we're facing problem, uh, problems here in this life, it helps us to want to go to heaven even more. And I'm thankful that that is the case. Um, the Bible tells us, for instance, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, the Bible says, Wherefore, we faint not, but though our outward man decays, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for the moment, worketh uh, for us more and more exceeding weight of glory. And, uh, and so, yes, there are problems in this life. Yes, we suffer in this life. Yes, we are, uh, you know, decaying and our, our physical broad bodies sometimes break down in this life. But that makes us look forward to heaven even more. Uh, he states further uh, in, uh, in Romans chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. He says, uh, if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. For I reckon the suffering of this present time uh, is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to usward. Romans, 7, uh, Romans 8, 17 and 18. So whatever what sufferings we face in this life, I tell you what, heaven is going to be worth it all. Uh, it's going to be worth what we face in this life and much, much more. The, the same God who created this physical universe, who created us as human beings, He knows what we uh, should look forward to as, an, as a reward in heaven for eternity, and He's made all those preparations, and so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, you know, I think about what the Lord told the church at Smyrna, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10, where he said, Fear not those things that you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried and have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. There are trials and tribulations here in this life, but what the most important thing is, we can't let them stop us from being faithful. We have to be faithful up to and including the point of our death. And if we'll do that, then the Lord will bless us with a crown of life in heaven when this life is over and the judgment is passed. And so there are benefits from suffering. God allows that suffering for us to get those benefits. And if it weren't for suffering, then we wouldn't have these things that we've talked about uh, this evening. I hope this has been a help to you. You hang in there. We're going to get this coronavirus behind us one day, and we're going to be able to come together and meet again. Uh, but until then, you just keep reading your Bible, you keep studying, you keep using all those resources that we have available to us, and most of all, you stay faithful no matter what. See you next time.